People suffering from allergies are often treated with medications or allergy shots. Now, there's a newer type of therapy called oral immunotherapy that can avoid the shots, and it has been found to be helpful for dust mites and other allergies. Let's talk about it. Hey everybody, it's Dr. David. So as a person who suffered for allergies, starting when I was about five years old up until about 35 years, so for 30 years, I was taking medications, inhalers, antihistamines, all types of things. So I know how much of a pain it can be to suffer for allergies. You can just be miserable when you can't breathe. It interferes with your sleep. You sometimes can't even think right. Um, it's terrible. You know, thankfully medications did help me, but still, it, it's quite a bit of suffering that so many people go through. Now, allergies, as you know, of course, for some people, it manifests as a stuffy nose or a runny nose, but it could also be like itchy and teary eyes. There could be wheezing and breathing problems, hives and other types of rashes and eczema. So there's a whole bunch of um, what we call atopic conditions. That's the medical term for allergies are atopic conditions for all of those. Um, now, of course, there have been medications like antihistamines. There's some newer medications called leukotriene inhibitors, um, steroids inhalers, of course, these are all medicines that have been used for allergies. But all of them do not get to the root cause of why a person's having allergies. Now, that gives me a good time to put in our quick plug of the week for vitamin D and zinc. So it is very well established now that deficiencies in both of these nutrients can worsen allergies, can increase the allergic potential and by getting these values optimized, which for me is in the middle part of the reference range at the laboratory, um, can get to be very much of a root cause as you can make those allergies go away. I was a perfect example of that. I know I've talked about it before. I had a very low vitamin D level when I did my original research on this back about 15 years ago or so. And once I got my vitamin D level normalized, I no longer had daily allergies. Corn was my trigger. But now I can eat corn pretty much whenever I want, making up for lost time. I don't need a lot of grains and such, but this is one uh, I feel like I got to make up for and starting to give me some good popcorn. <laughs> All right. Now, allergy desensitization treatment. This is different because this is something that could potentially turn around a person's allergies to that particular allergen that they're being treated with. And the most common way that this has been done, of course, is with shots. Okay. Now... Shots, yeah, they work, but, you know, if you think about it, who wants to get a shot, right? Now, there's another form that's called oral immunotherapy, which are these small tablets that dissolve under the tongue, and both shots as well as the oral tablets, they contain a minute tiny amount of the particular allergen. So in this case, the research that I'm going to talk about, that a tiny, tiny, tiny amount of dust mite antigen in there, the allergen, I should say. And so that's what causes the triggering of the immune response. Now, the way that both of these forms of immunotherapy works, it's kind of simple in terms of what it's doing. So first of all, it increases a type, a category of antibody called anti-allergen IgG. And this inhibits the IgE reaction from happening, okay? So we've talked about IgGs before. We know that these are the antibodies that go up during vaccines. These are the types of antibodies that go up once you've had a wild infection, and they are involved in the long-term protection against those infections. But this is a little different. This is actually attacking the immunoglobulin E that stops the reactions from happening. So that's pretty cool. Now, the other thing that it does is that um, these this immunotherapy, oral as well as shots, they also suppress the types of white blood cells that are involved in allergic reactions like eosinophils, mast cells, basophils. So it's got to get a two for one out of this, which is kind of nice because it's hitting it both at the cellular level as well as the chemical we call the humoral level. The, not that it's so funny, but it's the humors, which was the uh, the term that was used for the body fluids before anybody knew things. This was like going back to like medieval times, the humors of the body. Um, so the humoral immunity is when we talk about antibodies and cytokines, the inflammatory markers that are triggered by all of this. So now let's talk about the research that just came out. So this was looking at over 1,400 children 
ages 5 to 11, who were having signs of allergic rhinitis, so the congestion or the runny nose, the inflammation of the nose. And this is whether a person did or did not have asthma and a few other things, but they were specifically looking in a placebo-controlled manner, randomized. So half the people got a placebo that was just a little sugar tablet that they would put under their tongue. And then the other half actually had the real deal. They had to let it dissolve under the tongue and not drink for a little while after. This is the oral desensitization. And that's and we all know we have antibodies and other things. Of course, under the tongue, that's how things get into our bloodstream faster. So that's why it's such an efficient way. Similar to the way that shots do, and that they avoid going down into the stomach, that there's not the stomach acid exposure, not going through the liver first before the rest of the body takes care of it. So these are why it's done that way. Okay. Now, of these 1,400 plus children, 22% of them, um, had a, com uh, I'm sorry, there was a 22% increase. Let me say that one more time. A 22% improvement in what's called the rhinitis score, which is a, a it's a standardized scoring of, of like in terms of how symptoms are, how often does a person have um have uh, rhinitis, the um inflammation of the nose, is it all day long, how severe is it, etc. So a 22% overall improvement in the score compared to placebo when using these specific ones, and again we're talking specifically about dust mites. That's what was being done. Sidebar, if you don't know, dust mites, it's actually not the dust, the, the, the mite itself, the little bugger that's getting you. People are actually reacting to the poop, <laughs> to the fecal material. That's what the allergen is too. So it kind of grows. Yeah, dust mites means you're getting and you're, you're inhaling micro particles of their poop. And that's what people cause as an allergic reaction. So ick factor, right? <laughs> but nonetheless, that's what people are actually reacting to. Um, now, 30% of the kids who received this, uh, another term is called sublingual immunotherapy, um, under the tongue, sublingual. Um, now, 30% of these kids were able to completely get off of their allergy medicines. Now, in the placebo group, those who only took allergy medicines, only 10% were able to stop them their, them over time. And what they looked at, they, at, at the over the course of one year. Okay. So both, now that's a very statistically significant thing. So especially with the 22% improvement. So I've talked before about P values. When you're assessing if a scientific study is valid and not just do, um, random, that it could happen through random chance, but actually scientifically validated, a P value of less than 0 0.05 is considered statistically significant. Now, this is 0 0.0001. Much more, so a very, very significant finding here. Okay. Now, there are also drops that are done individually by doctors, some primary care, a lot of allergy doctors, will they, where they will create um, very specific um, plants that maybe there's several different allergens that a person is dealing with, and they can all be put into a set of drops. Now, this is not something that's FDA approved because it's not a commercial product. That's what the FDA does. This is a treatment, okay? So it's doctors are allowed to do it, but that's why you won't see an FDA approval when it comes to individualized sublingual immunotherapy by drops. Okay, so from a summary perspective, this is a really promising treatment for both kids as well as for adults. Again, who wants shots? Avoiding shots. That's just a great thing. Nobody wants to do that, even if they're not needle phobic. Nobody wants to be stuck with a shot if you can avoid it. Now, of course, um, now that allergists are becoming more um, comfortable in using these types of treatments, so more and more people should be allowed to avoid those shots in the first place, God willing. All right. So hope you learned a little bit more about allergies and allergy treatments and all of that. And have a great day.